Do you love the sound of FACGC tuning? But you find it very hard and very frustrating when it comes time to write and play in this tuning. If so, this is the perfect video for you. So, hey there, I'm Steve. Hope you're doing well. On this channel, we're all about helping each other get better at math rock and Midwest Emo star guitar. And as part of that mission, I'm giving these like free kind of videos for you where I'm sharing my experience and all my time uh, learning guitar over the past 20 years and hope that I can shortcut a lot of time and frustration for you. So today we're looking at a FACGCE roadmap. And basically, these are the four steps that I would take if I was to learn this tuning over again. And this can apply to any other alternate tuning that we might use for math rock and Midwest Emo too. And ultimately, um, I'm hoping to save you a whole bunch of time and frustration with this step-by-step -step system. Even though I'll cover a whole bunch of concepts in this video, I'll go into detail about some of them. Um, obviously, there's going to be a lot more to this. So if you do want to deep dive on each of these concepts, then I've given you a detailed list below in the description of other videos that you can watch to help you with each of those concepts. Oh, and by the way, if you are a lovely Patreon that supports the channel that's currently watching this video, I've put together a FACGCE Super Guide Pack Guide PDF uh, for you, which you can go and grab that down below in the description. Okay, so the first thing I would do is put that down there, <laughs> um, is like I've put here, understand the tuning. What do I mean by this? Well, the tuning of F, A, C, G, C, E is tuned to an F major nine chord. And when we look at the intervals is how we can get to this chord. So for example, the F is going to be the first degree, F, G, A, if we count up, this is the third, F, G, A, B, C, so that's going to be our fifth, um, F, G, the G is the second, but it's going to be a octave up, so we're going to call that the ninth degree. The C again, when we've got a fifth, and lastly, the E is the seventh degree, and that gives us this lovely F major nine sounding chord. And by knowing that we are using an F major nine chord, if you know a bit about your keys and your chords that are contained within diatonic keys, then this F major 9 chord is going to situate us in one of two keys, that being the 4 chord in C major, or the 1 chord in F major. So well, why is this important to know? Well, simply knowing that we are tuned to a chord and we are going to be situated within some kind of chord, you know, key kind of sound because of this, it influences a lot of the, you know, the chord choices that we can go with and, you know, our note choices and scales and stuff when it comes to writing. So this is a great thing to understand before we take that next step. And to give you a lesson, when I first started learning this tuning, I just fumble around uh, trying to find anything that sounded nice and I felt really lost and really confused. And I was just hoping I'd find um, a magically finding an idea. Uh, don't get me wrong, using your ears like that to find ideas is wonderful ear training. Um, you know, you can start to match up notes and get some nice sounds. However, in my opinion, it's wasted so much time and so much frustration if I just understood that I was tuned to a chord and that situated me within a key, um, I could have gone from there. And another thing to add with, was that in the beginning, I find myself fighting this tuning a lot. So what do I mean? by that is uh, I was trying to make this tuning sound like something else and um, that misses the whole point right if I knew this was tuned to a chord that this chord as um, if you know the guitarist Yvette Young she says that um, these tunings situate you in a sound they add some coloring on the canvas so to speak and it's best to just lean into that tuning and go along with it and let that color your ideas so to speak and that leads us on to our second step so now we understand the tuning we understand that we're in a chord uh, tuned to a chord let's say the next thing is to learn the basic chords in this tuning. I know it sounds obvious because this is something that we did uh, when we first picked up the guitar and learned in standard tuning. We started with those basic chords. But back when I learned this tuning, uh, there was no materials really online showing you what these chords were in this tuning. And I was just too lazy and <laughs> to work out uh, where the chord shapes would be across the neck if they were any. And again, I just fumble around, you know, just hopefully putting my fingers on to something, oh, you know, that sounded nice and just wasted the whole time in that process. And basically every time I picked up the guitar, it was like coming back to it as fresh. You know, I wasn't really making as much progress as I would have liked to. So to save you a whole bunch of time, since then I have worked out chords 
in this tuning, we could say these are basic chord shapes that you can use. And I put a whole bunch of those in my math rock uh, guitar ebook, a shameless plug there, but there's a whole section on these FACGC chords, as well as DA, DAEA C sharp E tuning, which is another tuning commonly used in math rock and Midwest DMA, as well as all of the essential chords for math rock and standard tuning. However, if you haven't got the money for that, completely fine. Um, again, I've got um, multiple videos covering this tuning and you can find a link for that down below in the description and that's going to go over all of the basic chords in this tuning. However, I won't keep you hanging. Um, because we've got two different keys as well, we want to learn the, the chords diatonically, the seven chords that we can use in both of these keys. So for example, C major, there's no really like neat chords that are just going to equal up like wood in standard tuning. We're going to lean into the sound of the chord itself. So for example, if we're in C major, then F is going to be our fourth chord. So that's the, you know, the F major nine open like that. And then the next chord would be the fifth chord, which is G major. And again, we're using that open string. So strictly not, you know, a G major chord, let's say, um, but you know, we've got to let that coloring in there. We're using them the same application as we would do in, in standard tuning. Next is our six, so it's a minor. A minor sound. Then we've got this, um, what's well going to be a B diminished, right? Well, half diminished. And you can hear the touch in there, and we're released to the, the one chord in C major, of course. From there, we've got our second, <clears throat> D minor. E minor, and then back to our fourth chord on the F. Lots of other chords. I'd highly recommend learning from this sixth string here and going to the fifth string. That way you're going to get a lot of coverage in this tuning. And like I said, you'll want to repeat that process with F major. Chords are in a different order, and you're going to have that uh, B flat, uh, F, G, A, B. That, that fourth chord is going to be A, B flat major in that case. Now that chord there, that sounds quite lovely. But I hear you ask why it is important to know these basic chords. Well, like any songwriting approaches, there are many ways we can do this. And um, harmony is one of the ways that we can obviously structure a song, i.e. using some kind of a chord progression. So that's exactly what we can do here. We can start to use these chord shapes to kind of inform like a, a skeleton, let's say, a structure to a song, like, you know, an F to a down to this <laughs> D sound. Let's see. Obviously, I would sit down and work out something a bit better than that, but that's the application there. And if you want to see this in action, there's two great songs that do this. So there's a uh, Tiny Moving Parts have a song called You Lost Me, and that song's in this tuning, F-A-C-G-C-E, and it's, um, I believe it's in C major as well. So it starts off with a F to a G and a 6A, then the one. And as you listen to that song, notice how it infers every single section of that song. After that part, there's a really like a really cool riff that Dylan plays, and that's all outlined by this same chord progression. Another song is the song Smile by the band Standards as well. Very similar to this progression. Again, F-A-C-G-C-E tuning, of course. And it's a great example of how you can structure a song, quite a catchy song indeed, uh, around a chord progression. Uh, quickly uh, interrupting Steve here. I'm trying out this new concept with these lecture videos that I'm doing today. So I'd really like to hear your thoughts about them. If you've been enjoying it so far, can you let me, do, let, let me know, sorry, down below in the comments that you'd like to see more of this or you perhaps think I should just go back to what I was doing before or any other suggestions. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Let's get back to the video. So moving on from there, we've got, we know we're in the, the key of F major or C major. We know that we're tuned to a chord and we're letting that coloring, uh, you know, the direction of any ideas that we write. Next, we've got some basic chords. So we've got started building up this understanding of this uh, particular tuning. So the next thing to do, um, as you can see here, map the fretboard here, a C major and F major. I'll come back to that in a second. So what I'd ask you to do is that because we're in these two keys, I'd like you to learn where are all the notes in C major and F major across the entire fretboard. I know it sounds like a lot of work, but I'm going to give you a method that will help you uh, do this, um, well, break it down into manageable chunks soon. Um, the reason for this is, 
you know, most of us would usually learn some kind of scales when it comes to, you know, playing a standard tuning. And standard tuning works really well for scales, but when it gets to like these kind of tunings, you can have a lot of doubling of notes because the strings are all up and down in tuning. So for example, um, you know, your C major scale now, You know, it's um, <laughs> jumping around the fretboard a bit like that. And it's not really the point of these tunings. You want to just, um, you know, use these open strings to your advantage. So one way that you can start to learn all of these notes where they are across the fretboard is by application of chunking. So, for example, if I go back to that, that A minor sound here, I'm going to try and, like, imagine if I was sitting down for a practice session just practicing mapping out this part of the fretboard between the third and the fifth fret here. So I play that A minor sound. So you've got a lot of doubling of notes there already. Yeah. And those would be the notes that I'm targeting when I'm trying to write riffs. And you want, of, of course, the superpower of these tunings is to use some of those you know, open string styles too. <laughs> so I was getting a bit lost there, but <clears throat> that's what you could do in a practice session. You could sit down, mapping it between there, and no matter when you pick up the guitar again, then you can start to say, oh, you know, there's um, three notes in a the line there that I can tap. And then you can start to work out the shapes like that, alright. And that's a great way to just stop banging your head against the wall every time you pick up the guitar. Like you're piecing together the puzzle every time you pick up the guitar. Let's piece together the puzzle one time by slowly piecing it together and then you have the complete puzzle and you can do this every single time. And um, these are all the notes in your C major scale. So there's, no matter what chord you choose, they're always going to sound good because they fit with those chords. I know there's more to it than that, such as note selection, you know, choosing the, the nice notes, let's say, you know, in a triad and so on and so forth. Um, but this, I find, is a better way, in my opinion, to learn uh, this tuning rather than trying to approach it in the, the, you know, looking at it at scale. So arpeggios would be a great way and just mapping out the entire C major as well as the F major. F major... <clears throat> Yeah, it was a little bit different because it got that B flat in there, but wonderful news, there's only one note difference uh, to learn that scale. So if you just learn where all the Bs are, you should them with the Bs, you just can't make them flat and you'll be completely fine. Also, some great news for you, I've already done a video on mapping out the fretboard in C major, and uh, in that one it's um, how to write uh, ideas and FC, uh, FACGCE tuning and again there's a link for that down below in the description to do a bit of a deep dive. Okay so again quickly recap we understand we're in F major 9 is colouring the sound of anything that we write we've learned some basic chords so we can start writing some ideas and actually start learning some chord progressions too and now we've started to map out the fretboard and now the last thing to do is this all sounds quite methodical so come out there um we're going to i'm sorry it's a bit rubbed off here but learn songs in facge tuning i.e make it fun so what do i mean here well think back to when you first started learning this tuning i'm sure you all got into this tuning well let's not lie many of us it's going to be because of the song never meant by american football <clears throat> and think back to that song that you heard. In my case, it was never meant. And I remember hearing like, God, that sounds beautiful. I really want to learn what that is. Found out it's not standard tuning. F-A-C-G-C-E tuning. Tuned my guitar to that. Strummed it open and had a big smile on my face. <laughs> and uh, well, you know, not accurate, but we'll, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I must have done anyway. Um, but I remember that feeling I had. And then the sudden realisation like, oh, I really don't know how to play anything in this tuning. So... Let's learn that never meant riff, you know, the one everyone's going to be learning the first time they put the guitar in this tuning. And um, that enjoyment, that fun of discovering this riff, this tuning, we need to remind ourselves as we go through this process, this is all quite 
you know, dry and methodical. So let's make it fun. So make sure that you're always striving to learn something. Um, so for example, if you're doing a practice session where, okay, I'm just learning some of the chords today. I'm going to spend 20 minutes just strumming through these chords. And then at the end of it, I'm going to learn, you know, you lost me, like tiny moving parts. And, you know, you've got some output of the thing that you've been doing. And it's a great way to end, you know, your practice session. Uh, you could do the same here when you're mapping out the fretboard. Maybe you're spending you know, 20 minutes just learning between the third and the fifth fret here. And the last 10 minutes, I just would want you to experiment with different chords and different melody ideas and you know, different open strings. And you get, well, in my, in my experience, you really get into it. It's a, it's a lot of fun to end that session that way. And um, of course, the other way would just to be learning songs at FACGC E tuning. And good news for you, um, over time, lots of these ideas, these songs have been transcribed. And I've done a bunch myself of transcribed few songs in FACGC E tuning. I've even done listicle style riff videos just on this tuning. I believe two of those. And again, I'll throw those down below in the description. Um, I believe that patrons can get tabs to those, but most of them you will be able to find the the uh, transcriptions online. All right, so there we have it, the roadmap that I would follow to learn FACGCE. Again, of course, there's much more to it than that. That's why I put those deep dive videos down below. And there's probably other things that I've missed off this list. So I'd like you to add them to the list there. I really appreciate you watching this video if you're still here and I hope you found it incredibly useful. If you're a patron, like I said, go ahead, grab that little, um, little FACG guide pack down there and I'm sure you'll appreciate that one. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.